Why do you do what you do? What is our motivation for how we live? I imagine we have lots of motivations for lots of different kinds of things that we do. And my guess is that most of us aren't really aware of all of our motivations. It's hard to know our own hearts. But this came up in Sunday uh, in service this morning. Uh, the pastor was referring to 1 Peter 2.18. And in the NASB, it says, be submissive to your masters with all respect. And I thought, that's an interesting translation. It, is that our motivation for how slaves are to uh, refer to or to respond to or motivated by respect for their master? And again, pull this into modern day culture, an employee and an employer, especially an oppressive employer. Uh, are we supposed to be motivated out of respect for them or not. Well, most translations go with respect. And I just checked it uh, in BDAG when I got home. It's the Greek word phobos. And if you look up in BDAG, there's basically four glosses for phobos. They are intimidation, fear, reverence, and respect. So respect is certainly a legitimate translation of phobos, depending upon the context. But it still was bothering me as I thought about it that I'm not sure that is my, at least my primary motivation for how I relate to my employer or if I was a slave how to relate to my master. It's interesting that the Net Bible says reverence but the problem is reverence sounds like it's pointed more towards God than it does uh, towards her, an employer. What's interesting is you go to the King James they actually say fear, that a, a servant should do whatever he does out of fear. Well, that certainly is not a biblical motivation for, uh, for slaves or em employees. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. And then you realize that what the King James is getting at is who are you afraid of? Are you afraid of your master, your employer? Or is our motivation about fear of the Lord? And obviously, when you look at this verse, that's what's going on. That our motivation for doing what we do, especially in difficult situations, is first and foremost to act out in reverential awe of God, to understand He is our heavenly Father and all that that means. What's interesting then is, and that certainly is the Old Testament background of the concept of the fear of the Lord, right? But it, what's really interesting though, is you start looking at the context of verse 18, it's very clear that the motivation is directed towards God, not towards the employer. In the previous verse, Peter writes, show proper respect to everyone, love the family of believers, fear God. And then in the very, very next verse, it uses the same word, phobos, to talk about how we relate to our masters, to our employers. And if you look at the two verses after that, you can see the context is still very much about God. Uh, for it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. In other words, they're living out their lives not so much looking at their master, their employer, but they're looking at God and they're living out it because they are conscious of Him. And in the next verse, he says, but if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. So that's the problem of translating phobos as respect or even reverence, because it implies that our motivation is how we come across to our master, to our employer. And in this passage, it's clearly about how we come across to God, that our motivation is through fear of Him. Uh, this explains the interesting NIVism in this part, because the NIV says, slaves in reverent fear of God, submit yourself to your master. Now, somebody could say, oh, you're adding words into the text, but that's not actually what's going on. Uh, I wasn't on the committee at the time this decision was made, but the concern is if you translate it fear and you don't lose that Old Testament theological concept, then by saying respect or something like that, you're, you're really losing what's going on in the passage. And the whole point is that we live out our lives in the fear of the Lord. We do what we do because our eyes are on Him. They are focused on Him. So I think in this verse you have to keep it, Phobos translated as fear, but as soon as you do what the King James does, you're going to miscommunicate because the only way we're going to hear that today is that we should live out our lives in fear of those human people who are in, in um, control of us, who are over us. 
And so in order to, now hear this, in order to not miscommunicate, the NIV had to add, had in, had in of God. And that if they had just left it fear, it would have miscommunicated. And I think if they translate it respect, they're going to miscommunicate because it's giving the impression that it's respect of the human master. So you have to keep the Old Testament theology alive, but you have to express it in a way that doesn't miscommunicate. You know, translation is not about getting one word uh, from one language over to another. That it's about accurately conveying the authorial intent. And sometimes you, all translations, even those that claim to be literal, uh, add words in all the time, okay? All the time, almost every verse. So that's just part of the translation process. It's often said that translators are traitors. And what it means is that we're traitors to the original meaning of the text. Either we don't convey all of it, or we put a little too much of ourself into it, trying to express accurately the meaning. But accuracy uh, has to do with meaning and conveying meaning. And so we work really hard to convey the authorial intent, the meaning that Peter had, regardless of what words that we need to use. So it's just an interesting lesson on semantic range of the word phobos, but just the realities of translating. And by the way, if you're wondering where I am, uh, we're down on the mighty Columbia River. It's a, it's a really weird day. It's so foggy that it's really hard to see stuff. But we come down here all the time and walk the dogs and just let them run and play. But it's uh, one of our favorite places to go. And as you saw earlier, there's other people here and uh, walking around us. So anyway, I hope that is uh, an encouragement for you uh, today as we listen to our dogs growl. <laughs> Thanks.